Pay no attention to that behind the curtain there. <laughs> the camera works better like this. We are live. <laughs> and surprise. Today I want to talk about uh, supercharged cams and superchargers and mixing and matching the two. So here's, here's what I mean. I did a test a, a while back. And we ran an LS motor. Let's see, what, what was it? I think it was a 5.3. Yeah, it was a 5.3. So we ran a 5.3. And what I did was we did a cam swap eventually to a cam shift from Brian Tui Racing. And it, it obviously made more power. N not a big surprise there. But my question is this. Um, we know that we can get more power and we're, I'm going to ask you about the other cams that we're going to talk about. But what we did was we started out, we wanted to run, I wanted to run a Vortex supercharger on this LS motor. So we hooked up the, the Vortex centrifugal supercharger. We ran it, um, on pump gas, we ran on E85. We ran it with an intercooler and we ran it with, in all kinds of, con all kinds of configurations. But we started off with an LS9 camshaft. So we, we started off with a factory blower cam, <laughs> albeit the cam was really designed, if you ask the engineers, for a different type of blower. So it was designed for a positive displacement blower. And you guys can tell me what you think about that. Honestly, having run that camshaft now NA with the positive displacement blower, with a centrifugal blower and a turbo, it does the same thing on all the combinations. So it's, it's softer down low and makes power up top. And it does that on every one of them. It doesn't. It doesn't all of a sudden come into its own. And I think that that's part of the misconception of camshafts. And it's kind of unfortunate that people. I think people actually think that. I think that they think that somehow, when you make a special camshaft for the thing, for the nitrous or the centrifugal lower or the twin turbo, it's the single turbo, that all of a sudden it it magically like is just overwhelming how much extra power it makes. And and I haven't ever found that to be the case. The LS9, when we ran it NA, it was very soft down low, and it, it but it makes good power on the top. That's exactly what you would expect of a cam that has specs like that. GM designed this cam for something specific that had nothing to do. I mean, it might have had a little bit to do with the power production, but they were easily able to make that power production. I mean, they had a supercharger, so it's not it's not going to be that hard. In fact, they probably had to not spin the blower anywhere near as fast as they could have. And they and the, the camshaft, every bit as important as whatever kind of power goal that they had set for it. There were lots of other goals that were probably higher on the list. It had to have 20 plus inches of idle vacuum. It had to get good fuel mileage. It had good good drivability. It had to last. It didn't have to. It could it couldn't have any warranty issues. You know, it had to be stable. All of these things. It had to get good fuel mileage and emissions. All of these things that have nothing to do with maximum uh, power. And I remember seeing comments from people in some of the videos about that. Oh, well, look, those those guys d don't know how to make camshafts. So particularly like when people see the comparison between a factory LM7, LR4 camshaft and something else, they're like, oh, wow, those guys didn't really know what they're doing. No, they knew exactly what they were doing. What they were doing, <laughs> they achieved exactly what they were trying to achieve. It's just that your interpretation of what they were trying to achieve is, is different than what the reality is. But on the LS9, that was designed for a factory supercharge application, a positive displacement blower with an intercooler, with all that caveat, all, all of the other things that they were trying to achieve with it. And it, it did a good job. It drives around. And, and here's what, and, and people that have made, aftermarket people that have made camshafts have done a similar thing. So what they typically do is because a roots blower offers immediate boost response what they and and is not as good at higher engine speeds um, and, and particularly at higher boost levels what they tend to do is make the camshaft they shift the power output of the camshaft so it's softer down low where the blower has all of the torque that, that you could possibly use and then they make the, the blower more efficient at the top so that they have a, a good combination thereof that's my thinking. That's what I think. That's why I think that they designed them the way that they do with really wide LSAs and stuff. And, um, and, and obviously a lot of that, it, particularly on the factory cams has nothing to do with power production. It has way more to do with idle quality and stuff, but we ran the LS nine cam. And, and the reason that I'm asking about this. So, so my question for you guys is how, how well do you think that the, and that will be our poll for today. I think I, I like that idea.
So the poll is, should the LS9 cam work well with a Vortex and cervical supercharger? And we're going to talk about that. So if you, uh, in contrast to a positive displacement supercharger that has an immediate boost down low, shorter runners though, so it, it, it also can run RPM. But the Vortex, the way that a centrifugal supercharger works is that it's, it has quite a bit less boost down low, and then it has a rising boost curve. So it usually produces the peak boost at the peak engine speed. So the more you rev it, the more power it makes. It spins a lower faster and away you go. And, and because, the, because it does that, and if we look at the way that the LS9 cam does on the NA motor, it does a similar thing where it, where it makes less power down low, but makes a lot on the big end. Those two things, the Vortec and the LS9 cam, should be a very good combination. And we take a look at the, I've, I've got some results here on, and we went, we on this 5.3 with an LS9 cam, we were in the, you know, low to mid 400s NA. And then over 600 with the uh, LS9 camshaft. And that was non-intercooled. And then we, like I said, we went up from there. But it, you know, and, and the curves look exactly like what happens with a centrifugal supercharger. The gains are less down low. And then as you go up in engine speed, the gain increases because the blower increases or because the boost increases you know, it just gets better and better. So you, you get bigger and bigger gains. It looks like the gain, if you if you didn't know what the numbers were, it looks like the gain from a camshaft. So if you go from a stock cam like the L, like the LM7 camshaft and you put a good camshaft in it, a truck Norris cam or a hot rod cam or something, and you get bigger gains out of the top, that's what a centrifugal supercharger looks like. It's just multiplied because it has, you know, it makes a makes much bigger power gains. We we gained 150 horsepower or something on that combination. And so those are the kind of gains that you get with boost, which is nice. You know, if you get 50, 60, 70 or whatever with a camshaft, you get 100 in that or 200 in that with um, with boost, which is nice. But so my question is this, is that a good match? Do you guys think that the LS9 cam that likes to rev and a Vortex supercharger that likes to rev, and both of them make power at the top of the RPM range, particularly on a small motor, do you think that that's a good combination? Or would you rather go the other way? Would you rather, if you look at what a Vortex supercharger does, even to any kind of stock cam, like an LM7 or something, if you look at what it does, it still does the same thing. It's still, <laughs> it's still increased. The gains that you get from the blower increase with RPM. That's the, that's the way that it works. So knowing that it has less boost down low and more boost on the top and, and comes on strong on the big end, would you then, instead of putting a camshaft that does exactly the same thing, where it's favoring the power at the top and makes less down low, would you want to do the opposite of that? Would you want to put a camshaft in that instead of the LS9 being soft down there, that you put a camshaft in like a truck Norris or something where you have a lot more power down low and in the middle compared to an LS9 camshaft? And if, if you have an aftermarket cam like that, you can make as much as the LS9 does do or more than that. So would you rather have a cam like that? Would you rather have a cam that adds a bunch more power for a centrifugal supercharger in the area where a centrifugal supercharger doesn't have a lot of excess power because it doesn't have a lot of excess boost yet? I mean, down at 3000 RPM and below that, a blower that's making 10 or 12 pounds might only have two or three down there. So you can see it's a big disparity in the power gains that you get based on RPM. So at two and three and 4,000, certainly two, but, but three and four and, and even 4,500 or, or so, even even 5,000. Because most of the gain is gonna be at 6,500. And if you rev it to seven, it's gonna make even more power at seven. But in that three, four, five range, um, it's still, the boost curve is still climbing. So if you can get a camshaft that would add a bunch more power there, like compared to an LS9 camshaft, which is very, very easy to do because almost all of them do that. Um, would you rather have that combination? Would you rather have more meat in that part of the curve? Even if you had to sacrifice some, if you were doing an aftermarket cam, like a, a truck Norris or a hot rod cam, you wouldn't sacrifice anything on, an LS, on a factory LS9 cam. It should be pretty easy to do better than that. But Honestly, if it were me, for if I had to pick a stock cam, I probably would pick the LS9 cam. If I if I had a Vortec and I wanted to make power out on the big end, and I and I only had the choice of factory cams, yes, I probably would pick that one. It's it's going to make the most power um, at you know at, at any given RPM. It's going to make the most power. It's just not going to be as strong down low. 
But if you were picking an aftermarket cam to replace that, a Chupacabra, a Truck Norris, a Hot Rod, that kind of thing, if you were picking some kind of cam like that, would you pick that cam to fill in that area and, you know, just try to get more power where it's really necessary? I mean, the same kind of question really can be asked about intake manifold. So if you, would you rather have the intake manifold that's optimized for, let's say, 6,500 RPM, but gives away some at seven and, and makes more power down low, like a fast manifold, for instance, versus some of these short runner high rams or, or sniper manifolds or those kinds of things. Would you rather have the, the, the added torque down low for the centrifugal blower thing? Same kind of thing. So camshaft, intake manifold. Which one of those would you rather have? So let me know in the comments. I'm kind of curious to see which way you guys would go. Um, I could see guys choosing both. I mean, I, I could, I can understand the reasoning behind both of those things. Um, you know, some guys, I, I love the way that when I had the Vortec on my Mustang, I love that, it, that it, that it allowed the, <laughs> the very torquey, but not very revy factory five liter, especially with the HO manifold, but even with the GT40 stuff, you know, it was not gonna, it was, it was not going to spin at 6,500. I mean, it would, it would, it would rev there, but it was way past the power peak. And so with a centrifugal blower, you, you've you added more usable RPM range with that. And, and I kind of like that in the Mustang because, it you know, it sounded good with a good exhaust on it and stuff. And the same thing with the LS is if you can get the belt not to slip and all that, you got all that science out and you run more RPM, you just keep making more and more power. It's kind of cool. So let's see what you guys got going on. And also, uh, if you have not, please take a look at the video that I put up today. Uh, M90 blower miss. <laughs> is it too small? Is it too hot? Can you not put it on bigger motors? All of the things I'm I'm using the comments that I get to generate this kind of stuff to try to answer some of these things because obviously there's misconceptions out there. I mean, there pe people have like I did when when I first tried to do the test. Um, we ha we have misconceptions, and then we try to figure out what the real data is and get the answers to it. And <laughs> and honestly, in the in in a given realistic like power range. I think it works pretty good. See what everybody's doing. Eric, Martin, Winston, Kyle, Eric again, <laughs> Durable Center, what's going on? Michael Jordan. Speaking of camshafts, waiting patiently for mine. I shipped out half of the camshafts that were ordered today and the rest of them will go tomorrow. So I don't know what your name is, but you might, yours might already have gone out. Talking about camshafts, how about Brian's Red Hot Cam and an LS1 with an LS6 head and an LS6 intake? Um, yeah, I, I, I think that that's a good choice. Um, I might look, uh, if, if, the, if the LS1 has stock heads on it, it always says 243, 799 heads on it, but, but stock heads... Um, I might be more inclined to lean toward the hot rod cam rather than the red hot cam. I, I don't think you gain very much from the red hot cam and the hot rod cam. The red hot cam is going to lose a bit compared to the hot rod cam. Great cam for a Vortec blower. I think it would be good if one desires the LS9 power curve. No, <laughs> no, that's a question. Room, room, yep. Lingen filter was hot on this cam for some reason years ago, but I don't recall why. He was hot on the LS9 camshaft. I'm reading the specs on the M112 does 40 horsepower at 1400 RPM, seem close. It should make up time with power lower in the RPM. I don't know what you're asking. Does the are, are you only picking up 40 horsepower, or are you asking if that's the parasitic loss? I don't know what you're asking, Turbo Centra. Just go with the 360 cam where it's open all the time. I'm waiting for my cam. Mason Campos. Let's see. Uh, Mason, your ship today. Yours went out. I hate stock cams, but I would pick that one. Yes, you want a tighter LSA than the LS9 camshaft. Sure, the centrifugal supercharger will make a big peak horsepower at max RPM with the LS9 cam. A truck Norris would make 60 foot-pounds of torque down low and the same peak numbers. I think it would. I think it probably might even make more peak numbers. <laughs> as long as you pair it with an LS4 intake manifold. 
Yes. And then the other thing that you would want to do with your LS4 intake and the LS9 camshaft is make sure to put it on a um, 4.8 liter. Talking about Mustangs, SM95, 5 liter, which is better, GT40P intake or the first gen Edelbrock Performer RPM intake? I think the RPM intake would be better, but I don't ever remember testing both of those. <laughs> Michael, you're the other Michael. Jesse, choosing a camshaft depends on so many things. It depends on your personal preference. <laughs> Don, so you're all in on the Comp 469. That cam's done a lot of stuff. I've tested a lot. Richard, the machine shop said it looked like oil starvation is what caused the damage. Well, uh, I would measure the installed height and then measure the cam lift and you have your answer right there. If the, if the springs coil bind has nothing to do with oil starvation. And oil starvation doesn't usually um, break a spring and a retainer like they're showing there. That, that'd that be really rare. But of course, they're going to say that. They're going to say that it's not their fault. They're going to pick something that's not their fault. I understand roots and screw blowers are considered positive displacement. What does it return the term refer to? What, what it means is for each revolution, it provides a given amount of airflow. And it's based on the size of the rotor pack or the housing. The loss at normal max RPM with a stock setup. I don't. Then you're asking if 40 horsepower is the right amount of parasitic loss associated with driving that supercharger. The, uh, to calculate or to measure the parasitic loss with anything, you have to um, drive the blower at that RPM, but also at a given boost level and also at a given flow rate. All of those variables have to be taken into account to figure out how much power it takes to drive the blower under those circumstances. So there's not an absolute thing. 14,000 RPM with for 40 horsepower doesn't seem like uh, doesn't seem like the right amount. Last thing, last thing to do with an LS4 intake manifold is toss it. Yeah, it's it's kind of low man on the intake totem pole. Queensland again. Do you know how much horsepower you lose for altitude? I have. Have you experienced this? Yeah, I've we've raced it at different elevations. Um, there is a formula for it, and I, I don't remember what it is. I have it, I think I have it in my auto math book, but I don't recall it off the top of my head. It's a percentage for every thousand feet, and I forgot what it is. <laughs> Mason, you're gonna have to hide it. <laughs> That's okay. Is the firing order different from Coyote compared to the 4.6 mod motor? I don't know. Somebody Does somebody have an answer to that? I would think that they would be the same, but I can't swear to that. I'm putting together a 325 with roller rockers, lightly. I'm sure that should be ported head and ported 706 heads. Lightly, oh, milled head probably, yeah. Is the K and the M together there somewhere? <laughs> Lightly milled head, 4706s with an M90. Okay. Yeah, Don, uh, Todd, you're you're looking at an near interference problem. Richard, what high RAM intake do you use on your 5.3 Dyna runs? Do you think I would be able to fit my Detroit? 8V92 blower. Also, my 5.3 has a DOD to, D to lead the mild stage one cam. I don't know about that blower and I don't know about mounting that. Um, on the engine dyno, we run a high RAM, but that blower setup will, and the adapter plate will also go on a low RAM. So you can run either one of them. When I, when I put it in my car, we ran it on a low RAM. 
the high RAM makes more power because it has longer runners. So in the RPM range that we'd be using, it's it's a better choice for power, but I don't know that it'll fit under the hood. Turbo cam would positive displacement blower cam would require less overlap and or LSA. It doesn't require anything. You, you can put whatever cam that you want for a turbo and whatever cam that you want for a blower and it will work. I know because I've tested all of them. I've run the same cam with a blower and a turbo and twin turbos and, <laughs> and positive displacement blowers and centrifugal blowers. And it all does exactly what it does NA. Whatever the camshaft does NA, the blower multiplies that in relation to how much boost you have present. The, there's no, you're not bleeding out boost. None of that is happening. Love the video today. Had a good laugh. Trying to pull the blade off the intake. Yeah, that was, that was fun. It's amazing how strong that vacuum is. Well, we, I guess you could calculate it with how many ever inches of vacuum we had in the surface area of the plate. As a general rule, a naturally aspirated combustion engine will lose 3% of its power for every 1,000 foot of elevation. Okay, from Garrett Turbos. Okay. That was a stock setup on the Land Rover that I was looking at. Definitely have a lot to learn about superchargers. Um, and I thought that I thought that Eaton or whoever did the blower for them provided that information. I just, um, maybe at low, like in 14,000 sounds like a lot of our blower RPM to me for a factory application, but maybe, maybe they are two to one. I thought that they were, I thought that most of them were less than two to one, um, blower speed. Um, I, I thought 12 would be kind of more realistic and, you know, 12,000 RPM and seven pounds of boost or something. It, you know, that, that might be a realistic number. I have an LS9 can 4.8, blew up the 6.0, so put it in the 4.8. Been going strong in my two-wheel drive Silverado for four years. Is it a, a nickified? Is it, is it a little soft down low? It's it's not as bad if you put gears and a converter on a 4.8, then, then the camshaft is a little bit of better choice. Uh, that's right, Martin. The, I, the truck coyote and the car, coy, car, car coyote motors have different firing orders, right? The M90 on Hiram skipped leg day. Oliver, you voted no. I retired the camshaft in the CT70H engine in my Z50, and it does a few more miles an hour on the top end. Nice. How did you adjust the cam? I need to measure it and see, and I didn't do that. I'd like to measure and see how, I know that we can, with the low RAM, we can sandwich that intercooler in between. So we get the low RAM and the intercooler and then the adapter plate and then the blower, and that fits under a truck hood. Um, at least I think it does. But I'd like to measure it and see how tall it is compared to like a truck manifold. I know that the... Low RAM and the intercooler and the blower is the same as the high RAM and the intercooler. I mean, the high RAM and the blower. Ford does number their cylinders differently than Chevy does. Chevys have even and odd and Fords go in order. And working the bugs out of the Hemi Dakota. That should be fun, right? I just watched Fast Cars 2. Tell me that was you putting a super charger on the wagon. Yeah, that was, I did this stuff with Chad and his family. That was an awesome thing. That was a lot of fun. Uh, and his, his, his wife was awesome people too. Unfortunately, she passed away, but that was, a, that was a fun deal. That wagon's pretty sporty. How come centrifugal blowers don't use any sort of corresponding size metric similar to displacement for a positive displacement? Because they're not, <laughs> they're, they're not a fixed displacement. But they do have, um, I guess you could measure them in maybe impellers, in impeller sizes the way that you do with turbos. But um, 
it's just that you, we know what size tur or what size centrifugal blowers will provide a given amount of power. I mean, that's mostly thanks to the manufacturers. Uh, I have two forty three heads. I might want to change them. What heads you recommend for what? What are you trying to get done? A two two forty three heads are good factory heads. They're they're the best. Well, they're, they're arguably the best cathedral port head if you have a bigger motor. Um, but the only way, if you want to have the the rec port heads, factory rec port heads would make more power than those. They'd be a little softer down low. Ported versions of those do very 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 well. Kyle with a 400 crankshaft horsepower stockish LS six lead the Borg Warner S488 compressor map seems like a great match. Why do people keep suggesting an S475 billet S476 and S480 when it's clearly off the compressor map? Well, the reason for that, Kyle, is that almost nobody runs their blower at the island of efficiency of maximum efficiency. If you look at where that is and what the corresponding um, boosts and power output are, it's usually not very much power. <laughs> the, the island of maximum efficiency is nowhere near what that blower will support. And then what happens is if you have a big blower, you're losing response. So the bigger the blower, the less the response. So if you only want to make a thousand horsepower, you should put on a turbo that doesn't make a thousand horsepower at the island of maximum efficiency because you're, it's going to be a lot softer. An S488 uh, would be much softer than an S475. And if you're not using all the S4, or you, unless you're going to, if you're going to max out the 488, then use that. But if you're not going to max it out, you'd be better off with a smaller blower. I filed the holes backward in the camshaft sprocket with a chainsaw file. Nice. You made your own adjustable sprocket. That's cool. Is there more inherent risk of boost coming on too soon with a cam and a blower application? They say more RPM spread out the BMEPs between firing cycles. I don't know how you're going to change the, the BMEP in each cylinder. Um, are you worried about making too much torque? I got the MS3 Pro Evo installed on my Jeep Cherokee 4 liter turbo. Nice. I'll get some tuning done. <laughs> Tim, you had questions all at the ready and then you forgot them all. They'll come back. I'll be back. Richard, this is numbers off of my block. What kind of block is it? Start with the big picture. Is this a small block Ford, a small block Chevy? Is it a, is it a LS? What is it? Start with that, and then we'll figure out what you're trying to do. Boost coming on too soon. With a centrifugal blower, you don't have to worry about the boost coming on too soon. That's not going to happen. With a positive displacement blower, it's gonna, it's gonna, the boost is going to be immediate as soon as you step on the gas. Just, But some people like that, though. Just finishing up a 31 spline, five-leg swap rear end for the Fox, 43-millimeter calipers from the Taurus and Cobra, 11.6 rotors. So you did a five lug front and back and you put the Cobra brakes on it. Cool. Did you change the spindles too on the front? Got a 5.3 aluminum block with 243 heads, going to turbo with a GT45 and a light car, trying to decide on cams. It's got a 6L80. Um, Nickified, what you want to do is, what I would recommend is putting a smaller cam in it. Um, a GT45 and a 5.3 is going to work pretty well you're going to max out the turbo pretty easily. So a truck Norris or that kind of camshaft is going to be a good choice for that. Have you ever put so big of a blower on there that you deliver, deliberately put a milder cam on the application? No, I wouldn't do that actually, because what you, what you would end up doing is having a lot of boost pressure. If you make the NA power output less, and spin the blower at the same speed, you're going to raise the boost pressure. And so I, I, I actually don't like doing that because I'd be more worried about um, detonation from heated charge air. 
And, and a big blower might also be not as responsive as a smaller blower spun faster. If you spin in the same speed, the blower is going to, the bigger blower is going to be more responsive, but, but that's not usually the case. My turbo setup is in the middle of the island at 14 pounds. Definitely slow to build boost. Yeah, that's a, that's a common thing. People think that they, oh, I want the, we'll pick a number, 71% efficiency island. I want to be there. Okay. <laughs> But if you look at that intersection, <laughs> that's not a good spot. Might be a good spot if you're running sustained RPM and you're already there and you don't have to worry about it, like Bonneville. Um, then, and that's what we did. We did it so that we had a big enough turbo, so that and a big enough hot side also, so that we had less back pressure than boost pressure. Um, and honestly, on that one, I I need to look and see where we were on the map on that. Uh, on that turbo, but that, that would be a good application for that, but not for street response for street response. You're, you're, nobody's going to run there. <laughs> it's, it's going to be smaller and, and more to the right side of that Island. Richard, do you ever work on your own stuff anymore? Yeah. When I go down to the dyno, but my truck, I just go out and wiggle the wiring to get it started. <laughs> What generation 5.3 came with electronic throttle body? Gen 4s definitely did. 95 spindles on the front, Cadillac Brembo brakes on the front, 13 rotors. Nice. Hypothetically, carb, distributor, no smart anything. What might cause an engine to rev hang after a dyno pull besides an intake leak? Because I'm not using a carb. Um, is your distributor spinning freely? Um, I've seen the weights get stuck. The centrifugal weights get stuck. Is the throttle closing? I was curious if the idea of a TVS supercharger off the Jaguar were feasible episodes, seeing as the 1320 and 1900 off the five liter and three liter can be had for sub 400 and an adapter plate. I, I don't know what you mean by and an adapter plate. Is there an adapter plate at the wrecking yard? But the the TBS superchargers uh, from Jaguars and from if they're on Range Rovers too I don't know are um, very hard to come by I I've only seen I've probably seen two or three of them but compared to like the M90 which we see I don't know six eight ten of those every time I go to the wrecking yard and they made they made literally millions of those. <laughs> supercharged 3800 motors and they made literally hundreds of supercharged jaguars so it's not it, the the availability is kind of the biggest thing there my other project i'm building an eight liter magnum v10 stage three cam and a nice set of turbos but if i need to put it in a plymouth laser <laughs> that that would be all of it that'd be, that'd be zinger i i think the tvs would uh, of equal size compared to a traditional roots blower should make more power i mean it's a more efficient design Would you agree that a big part of picking a cam is deciding what RPM range you want to operate in? Yeah, I, I, I would agree. I, I think for me and for most people that are driving on the street, the other end of the spectrum is more concerning. The, the idle quality and drivability and the need for a converter and that sort of stuff, I think probably dictates the other stuff. I do, I do need to claim this. Thanks, Ivan. I'm trying to tune a rising boost curve, but I think the stress would be too much at higher RPM. If you listen to all of the LS guys running turbos on it, they, they will tell you that more RPM makes it easier with a, on a boosted application because the boost softens the, I don't know, softens the RPM at the top or something. My six liter LQ4 needs a new crank or needs to be turned. It's a 24 X. I'm being told to get a 58 X for tuning purposes. What do you think? Why would you change the, why would you change that? If you put a 58 X in it, what, what are you, what management system are you using for that? If you're using a factory ECU, you should stay with the 24 X. There's nothing wrong with the 24 X and it, and the 58 X doesn't add anything to you. It doesn't make it run better. It doesn't, it doesn't make more power. It doesn't do any of that. If it makes it harder, because now you have to convert it to something, um, you have to go to a different uh, cam trigger if you, can't, if you can't combine the two. 
Um, I, I wouldn't change it if you're running the factory ECU. You know, a dude in Vegas with a Range Rover blower from a Ford 4.2. LeBron James says your best ability is availability. I found a few here in Utah, but eBay has them for cheap. Could be the throttle by sticking. I had an opportunity to test some changes like rev limiter successfully revved to 8,000. Didn't have some starting and the other stuff. Okay. Yeah, I would. you could see if the throttle body's hanging up. Or is it bending when you close it or something? Fire falls off at 6,000. I like to peak at 7,000, so I don't need to shift in the fourth before the eighth. So are you going to put a rising boost curve in it? Do you have a boost controller so you can do that? Would you need to make your own adapter plate if I could send, send you mine that fits on a Holly low ram for an LS Cathedral port? Yeah, I, I don't really know what you're asking. I, I, I don't want another blower and I don't want to try another blower. Um, but that's what we did is we had a high high RAM or a low RAM. Tom DeMuse, well, I made my first one. And then Tom DeMuse made adapter plates so that you could put that M90 blower on those manifolds. He also did it uh, with other blowers, uh, M112s and the that Ford racing one. And so you really can, with a, with a big open plate on a high ram, that's just a big opening. You should be able to put any kind of blower on there that you want, as long as you just make the opening. And if you have a bypass opening, make that. And then however you bolt the blower down to the adapter plate, the adapter plate bolts down to the high ram. So all of that should be fairly easy. Bo, Bo knows. Forgot I did that. Actually, think about a dozen other things. <laughs> yeah, I don't have time to hang out. Uh, it's electric throttle body for my J series with the electronics ripped out. Probably just needs to be cleaned. Yeah, it might be. It might be sticky. J thirty five Gen two head with all three exhaust ports merged into one. Any issues with bolting a turbo directly to the head? No manifold high temps in a turbo. No problem. Uh, I think you can bolt a, a turbo directly to that. When we did that, we did that on a Volkswagen application because it had a it had a similar kind of head where they all merged together. We put a, a, a length of pipe in between. Um, I, I just wanted to try to get some of the temperature away from that head, but they don't do that. I mean, they they run the exhaust manifold on there. I just don't know um, if it's designed for the heat of a turbo. Uh, Matthew, yeah, you could run you could run as many as you want. Ralph, what's, are you in Hawaii? A lot of manufacturers nowadays bolt the turbo directly to the head. I don't know about the J-Series specifically. I've seen lots of guys run turbos on those J-Series with those exhaust ports. Because I, I, Jimmy and I talked about this at length. And um, guys are definitely doing it. So you, it can be done and they're making power. I don't know if they're bolting the, if they, they have to have some kind of adapter that's a T3 or T4 to that flange that's on the head. So there's going to be some section of tubing there. And then how are you going to do the wastegate if you do that? Florida. All right, good, cool. I want to go back to Florida. I, want, I definitely want to go back out, out in the, um, back out in the Everglades and look for more snakes. The best thing about boost is that the stock cam will work with it. It, it will. It will work with all the blowers and the turbos and all that. Oh, uh, two engines, one with a large blower, the other with two blowers with a total displacement that matches the displacement of the single blower. Two questions. Would the twin blowers be more, more what? I don't know responsive to the single blower uh i have no idea blake i don't know i've never tried anything like that to know what that situation is Let's 
Central Florida, East, Northeast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all of ours were down below. Is it 75 that crosses Florida? Uh, we were, we were all the way down at the bottom too. Cause we, we went to the Everglades national park down there. Cause we were looking for, to help catch the invasive species to catch pythons. Like we found one, but it was pretty small. Andy, it seems like so many people have a hard time picking a cam or wondering why their cam doesn't work for them. If people would just watch your channel. <laughs> I would help them. I could steer them in the right direction. Right? At least I could give them dying results. Can't wait to hear my M90 on a Chrysler 2.7. That will be cool. I still want a baby Tegu. Those are cool. They're... Um, the school my wife works at, somebody brought um, one of those. I no, I think she bought a beard. She brought a bearded dragon in. So I got to go over and play with that. Uh, rebuild. I don't know about the six seventy one at ten pounds. Um, a three hundred six with Promax heads and an X cam is going to be. I don't know. Somewhere between 350 and 400 NA, I would guess. In the 671 at 10 pounds. That's 50. Uh, mid fives, maybe. Every other post, of what's a good cam for a 383 flat top distance? <laughs> As long as it has valve reliefs, then you have lots of choices. If it doesn't have valve reliefs, then you have very minimal choices. What would you say the M90 flows on a compressor map? Uh, I think that Eaton has um, compressor maps for their blowers. Um, I think that they do. You, you need to go down the rabbit hole and look at that. Um at 14 pounds, it's not gonna and and it and it has to be at what would you say that was? 61 pounds at two bar. What what is the 61 pounds? That's the flow rate and that's the pressure, and you're wondering what the map would be. It doesn't have a map like a turbo. How beautiful and green is Northern California right now? It is. It's beautiful right now. It, this is the way that I like it. Um, I wish the puppies would <laughs> mind better, but uh, the other dogs we used to, Milo and and our girl that passed away, she had cancer. But this was a great time of year because I could take them and just let them go, and they could just like be bounding through the very very tall green grass, and they just loved it. They that that was the greatest thing. They could go go out there and be dogs. I'm afraid that if we let the puppies go, that we might not ever find them again. And, and I, oh, and I forgot to tell you guys, uh, yesterday or the day before, I, um, it's not my first snake because I found one in February, but uh, I found a little ringneck snake. My Lisa and I were walking, we were hiking up in the hills with the with the dogs, and um, I just saw the little ringneck snake on the side of the path, waiting to jam and get away, which he did successfully. Kyle, folks are making fantastic horsepower numbers on class limited 76 millimeter S400s. Yeah, if you if you get to where you have maxed out the turbo on the hot side and the cold side, which you do by adjusting things um, with the wastegate welded, they complain about the 96 88 turbine back pressure when the compressor is maxed out. Yeah, and it would depend on it would depend on the displacement of the motor um, as to which one of those that you would max out first. And then you have to have the secret cam profiles to get everything to work right. I should have it done next weekend if I have time and then off to the dyno, I share the results. Yeah, Matthew, let me know what happens. Have you tested turbos that are too small for an engine? Yeah, we've maxed turbos out before. Um, I did that on the little T3s that come in the SVO Mustangs and the Turbo T-Birds and the Miracours. We put those on a B16 and maxed them out. I was I did it when we were 
doing an AR test. So we had three different ARs for the same, for that same T3 turbo. And we, we were able to max the turbo out. The thing that happens though is, and, and this is what, how people hurt things is that the turbo is able to, let's say the turbo can flow enough air and this is not exactly how it works, but let's say the turbo can flow enough air to make 350 horsepower, let's say. It's a realistic number for a T3 turbo. So it can support 350 horsepower out at the horsepower peak. It can also support 350 horsepower at 3,000 RPM. <laughs> so if you look at the torque number that that is, so what I'm saying is that if you don't have it regulated at all, if you just allow the turbo to do whatever it can do, it'll have a huge boost number down low. And then what will happen is it'll just have a falling boost curve. So it'll have a falling boost curve to produce <laughs> the 350 horsepower worth of airflow at every RPM. It doesn't work exactly like that, but it gives you a pretty good idea. And that's the problem is you, you can make, you make 10 pounds out at the top and it makes 350 horsepower. That's good. But it makes 25, <laughs> 25 pounds of boost down low. And that can be a problem. The fender is 13.25 compression high for an LS LQ4. How did you get that kind of compression? And how to deal with high temps? Can I use 317 heads to reduce the compression? Yeah. How did you get that? Do you have a really big dome piston in there or something? I would like. I'd love for you to debunk the custom cam craze that so many people have. I, I don't know how you would go about debunking that. You're never going to. People are always going to think that they're, when somebody tells them that I'm going to do a custom cam for your application that's tailored exactly for your application, <laughs> that's the Kool-Aid that people want to drink. They want that to be the case. And, and maybe it is. Maybe a guy hit upon some combination that's that's working perfect for them. The problem that I have with that is uh, the, I have two problems. One is that thinking that there's an absolute camshaft for a given application is is not accurate in my opinion. And if only for the second reason, because that's wholly subjective. <laughs> if you put a camshaft in there and it makes the biggest peak number, but loses torque, is that the optimum combination? Or what about if you lose a little bit of horsepower and then you gain that torque back. Is that the optimum combination? What if you broadened the whole curve, lowered the torque peak a little bit, but had more power, more average torque through the whole thing? Is that the best one? Do you see what I mean? We could go on and on and on endlessly for, so the, what is the, actually that, that we always talk about, what is the best cam? What is the ideal cam? What is the ideal custom cam for that? That's, that's subjective. Everybody's opinion about that is going to be different. And the person that's making the cam has a different opinion. Whatever happens with his custom cam is he's going to tell you, that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> that was that was my idea for the best cam for that application. It turned out exactly the way that I wanted it, you know, whether it did or not. Let's see. For example, 3NGX turbos on a stock 5.3 or an R32 GTR turbo on a 5.3. If you put a really small turbo on a 5.3, it's just not going to be good at all. About the pulley and hub adapter you told me about the other day. Taylor, what's going on? <laughs> Taylor from a friend's phone. Did you phone a friend? I have four bearded dragons. That's awesome. Two about, oh, oh one, two feet long? Two footers? Nice. Two footers are big. He's talking about the adiabatic efficiency map. A, a roots blower is not comparable to a turbo in terms of efficiency. What are your plans for the next series of dyno builds and comparisons? Um, I think when I go down next, I probably will do Pontiac stuff. Have you ever oversped turbo and blown up the wheel? I haven't. We have... I've only ever hurt one turbo that I can remember on the dyno and the wheel seized up when we were idling the motor. So it was an interference problem. The LS9 is a supercharger cam because it's on a supercharged motor.
Recently watched a three-year-old video of a guy putting a second throttle body before his turbo to keep it spooled up when he lets off the shift. Yep, lots of different forms of anti-lag. You posting turbo cams for sale? I do have turbo cams for sale. Uh, they do want to drink the Kool-Aid. <laughs> it gives them a warm, buzzy feeling. Well, and and if you spend money on a custom cam, how are you going to admit to somebody that it's, it's kind of soft down low? <laughs> I mean, who's going to say that after spending that kind of money? The best cam is a free valve idea. Yeah, but that's not, I don't think that that's going to happen. You keep saying the better your NA combination is, the more power you make with less boost. I haven't heard you say anything about compression ratio in relation to boost. I, I don't, well, it, it does add power. And if you're trying to make lots of power, in fact, the conversation that we were having earlier ties exactly into that. If you have a class limited turbo size or a class limited blower size, you want to put as much compression in it as you can because you're making the NA motor. It's a combination of things. You need to get everything out of the turbo or the supercharger. And you do that in a number of different ways, but you also need to get everything out of the NA combination to make the combination of those two combinations, the making the most power that you can in the RPM range you're running so that it accelerates your vehicle in the class that you're in. So uh, normally I don't recommend people put high compression in turbo motors, you know, like these junkyard motors, because there's no reason to do that. If you have a thousand horsepower turbo, you don't need to go up to 12 to one to have it make a thousand horsepower. It's going to do that at nine to one or nine and a half to one. And it's going to do it on pump gas. It might not do all of it on pump gas, but it's going to work a lot better on pump gas with lower compression on it. You're going to have a bigger uh, a tuning window than having the high compression. Uh... <laughs> when someone mentions turbo cam, I can imagine exasperation. It's not. I, in, in fact, when somebody says turbo cam, I immediately just think cam. When somebody asks me for a turbo cam, I tell them about a cam that will do the things that they need it to do. Boost response, idle quality, those kinds of things. Because it's going to do, it's going to work with a turbo. I still get lots of people asking, well, does the truck Norris cam work with a turbo or the best cam or sloppy stage two or whatever cam? Does it work with a turbo? Yes, it does. They all do. Do you think a 205 or 215 head would be too much for a small displacement engine? What what head, what engine family, and what displacement? Okay, so there are turbo cams. <laughs> yes, all of them. Recently worked on a VW Passat W8 engine. Very cool. Tiny little thing, pain to work on, but really sounded cool. Perfect to put in an old Beetle. That would be cool. That That has like other guys kind of feel to me. Use an LS9 cam in my 036 liter. 03. With a three turbo mainly for cost. A 76 millimeter. Do you have Gen 6 big block cams for sale? I don't. I don't have any Gen 6 stuff. A turbo cam is the best NA cam for your motor? Yeah. And I even get people that ask that. Well, if I put a turbo cam in, can I run it NA? <laughs> yes. Yep. Because it's just an NA cam. I'd like to custom cam with the same duration at 50 as an off the shelf cam and see what the difference on the dyno is. It's If the specs are the same, if they grind the, grind the cam the same, it's going to be the same. Only your brake booster will really think you have the wrong cam. Yeah. And idle quality and when you're going through a drive in and all of that stuff. I built the D16 Honda with a 60 millimeter T4 and a log manifold two inches off the head, then a 30 inch four into one header of the same turbo, same peak horsepower, closer to the exhaust ports. The Kyle, you're saying the turbo response was better on a log manifold than it was on a four into one header, and it was in it and it came on 2000 RPM earlier. That seems like a lot.
Piston change in an L92, losing four cc's from valve release. How much should I milled heads to regain the compression? Do you want to do that? Or are you even going to be worried about that? Most people go 30 on heads. You don't need that much for four cc's. Probably 20, but you might as well go 30. Four inch crank on a 4045 dome piston. How do you feel about the Holly Dual Plenum Sniper? Are you talking about the cross ram one? The cross ram one, I have videos up on it. It did very well. What about a turbo feeding an M62 on a Hyundai Elantra? I have compound boost stuff up where we've run a turbo or twin turbos feeding an, an Eaton positive displacement supercharger. We did it on the 3800 and also did it way back on a twin turbos feeding the Eaton 112 on an 03 Cobra. And it works good. It just doesn't work as good as the turbo does by, <laughs> by itself, but it's much more responsive that way with the blower and it's twin charged, which is awesome. Turbo cam should work with a supercharger though, kind of. A, a turbo cam works with the blower and a blower cam works with the turbo. They all do the same thing. How well they work will be a function of how well they work NA. The LS9 cam is a perfect example. It's a blower cam. It's a factory blower cam. It's soft down low. It's soft down low with a blower. It's soft down low with a turbo. It's soft down low NA. And guess what? Guess what it is with nitrous? Yes, it's also soft down low with nitrous. It, because that's what the cam does. It does that with everything. And that's what other cams do. Whatever they do, whatever their NA power curve looks like, they do that with a turbo. They do that with a centrifugal blower. They do that with a positive displacement blower. Would you put an LS in place of a 5432 valve engine? Or what advice would you give? I'm trying to make a decent decision matrix for it. Well, can you achieve what you need to achieve? Is the motor already in place and is already hooked to a transmission? Is already a working running motor? If that's the case, I tend to lean towards modifying that one. You can make a lot of power with that motor with boost. If, if you can do that and tuning and stuff and get to what you need to get to, that's the easiest way. Swapping is way more expensive and way more time consuming. Roland, I'm chasing a high RPM misfire since I put my F2 on my 540 big block. It seems to misfire at 6,800. I have 7,000 MSD limit module. Could I just be hitting the rev limiter? Raise it up 200 RPM and see if it still does it at the same engine speed. You, It might be activating earlier. You have to make sure and check new cams. I got a sloppy stage two when I checked it. Lift was way off, contacted them and got the right one. I talked to Brian Tooley today and he was telling me about uh, an interesting thing, an interesting thing that they did. They bought a Brian Tooley camshaft. I think it was a, I think it was a truck cam and they bought a, it, it says that it's a Brian Tooley cam. It's from, um, you know, eBay or, or Amazon or whatever. And it, and it's a, um, you know, it's a, obviously a, a China copy an expensive one. And they bought it and then they, <laughs> they took it and they did a metallurgy test on it. And it's, a uh, um, it's, it's essentially, it's not a billet cam. It's a, it's a flat tap at cam core and the specs aren't anywhere near what they should be for the cam. In fact, it's, it's basically as the cam specs were as small as a factory five, three LM seven camshaft. So you have a camshaft that if, if you have, like, let's say that you had a truck and you have an LM7 camshaft in it, and you put this camshaft in, it's not going to make any power. And then shortly thereafter, it's going to destroy itself because it's not a roller cam. So it had both things going on with it, which is why you need to make sure that when you get stuff, like from somebody who's tested it, that you get the right things. You have to make sure and check the new cams. How about a cam for very high back pressure? Would less overlap be beneficial? I don't think you're going to cure uh, back pressure 
with overlap. Back pressure, the biggest thing that affects back pressure, in my opinion, is the power output of the NA motor versus the size of the turbo. And so if you make more power NA, your back pressure is going to be higher for any given size turbo because you're making more power and you have more exhaust flow. When will we see a Gen 4 5 liter Big Bang? A, a Coyote, you mean? I've never even run a Gen 2 or a Gen 3. I've only run Gen 1s. Is choosing cam duration and LSA dependent on experience or is there a way of calculating the right one for you? Well, if you are really, really knowledgeable about cams, you shouldn't be picking those two things. You should be picking valve events. If you want the if you want the cam shaft to do what you want the cam shaft to do, you should be picking valve events. If you don't know what cam choice is going to help you achieve the thing that you want to achieve, then you should ask people who have. I like I don't like asking people that design camshafts for that. I like asking people who have tested those cams and can show me data on, hey, look, when we did this, it did this. I like seeing that. That's why I test things. There's no engine in the car. I own the 5.4 and T56 for it, but I'm concerned about the cost of timing chains and cams. Why are you replacing any of that? We, we run junkyard 5.4 32 valve motors the same way that we run junkyard LSs. Stock LS9 has a wide LSA. BTR LS9s are a bit tighter. Uh, bought it three years ago. I think now they would probably suggest a different camshaft for that, right? <laughs> Hold the racing online source. That's coming. I've been shipping stuff. We're working on the other stuff. Should the LS9 cam work with the Vortex Centrifugal Supercharger? Yes, work well with it. Closing our poll, we got one more minute. I can't believe how fast the time went by. Time flies when we're talking tech. When we're tech talking. When we're talking tech, 1980 Apollo Motorhome, engine block number O. Oh. Is it a is it a Chevy? Is it a Ford? Is it I don't know what's in an Apollo Motorhome. Do you know what what manufacturer it is? Have you tried to search those numbers? High performance passenger is the only place that I've seen that is on Chevrolets. Copy. I'm going to take a look at that when I get off of here. It looks like a truck, uh, a 445 is a truck block. Uh, according to, I just put those numbers in a search and that's what it gave me. There'll be more big bang motors in the future. Yes. I, I won't do an L8 T though. I don't think. I mean, I think guys have already made a lot of power with those, right? And on that note, it is time to go. I will see you guys all tomorrow.